I'll tell you what let's do while we have a chance. Do you, do you Are you able to do uh, This Week in Auto History? Sure. I got you queued up. Yeah, oh, really? Mm-hmm. You're, everybody was reading my mind? No, we were just queued up. Oh, queued up. Okay. <laughs> it's just so a let's, short scan. <laughs> yeah. So let's, let's do This Week in Auto History. So, you know, we've been talking. Don challenged me to do something a little more technical. So uh, a couple of weekends ago, we did exhaust manifolds. Last weekend, we did intake manifolds. So I figured this weekend we'll do a little bit on the, uh, uh, oh, auto history. Never mind. I'm, I'm doing Conrad's Corner. Um, so in 1910, uh, Franklin uh, and Spencer Strahan incorporated champion spark plugs in Toledo, Ohio. <laughs> And this is one of their first spark plugs. If you remember in the beginning, spark plugs, they actually they had the plug wire was bolted to the top of the spark plug. So that's one of the more original spark plugs that were out there. In 1928, Chrysler Corporation introduced the Plymouth as its newest car, kind of its low-priced entry car. And um, the logo uh, was the Mayflower ship as it landed on Plymouth Rock. Pretty rare to find a Plymouth with that on it, but I know John has, uh, out at Hemi Hideout, I think he has yep. a, a sign with this logo on it, which is quite rare. I uh, want to wish a, uh, a happy birthday to Richard Petty. He's 80, he was 87, 86 this week and still active and still signing autographs. They say he is one of the kings of, of taking Kingdom. care of of spectators that he'll stay till the end to sign an autograph for everybody. Looks like he's wearing chaps in that. Okay. Whatever. Might be. Please go and ahead. And then also in 1992, the original Corvette engineer, Zora Duntov, drove the one millionth Chevrolet Corvette off the assembly line in Bowling Green, Kentucky. And it was a red car, a white car with red interior and a black roof. And it was done to commemorate the 19th, um, uh, the original Corvettes that were all white exterior with the a red interior, the mm-hmm. 53. So uh, a- after one million cars, here's Zora. Um, I have to tell you that I got the chance to meet Zora and talk with him uh, at a Corvette uh, Expo, as it were. And uh, very nice man. Very, very sweet. Man. I mean, have a he picture, was don't swarmed you? over by, by folks. Yep. And then in um, uh, 1985 this week, the blockbuster movie, uh, Back to the Future, uh, in which uh, John DeLorean's iconic concept uh, uh, was transformed into a time travel device. And everybody everybody remembers this car. And true DeLorean or uh, uh, aficionados can tell what movie this one was from because I guess the little white piece on top kind of changed from uh, uh, a couple of generations movie movie. of the through the movies and stuff. So, and then in 2005, the last Thunderbird, Ford Motor Company's iconic sports car, uh, emerged from the Ford factory in Wixom, Michigan in 2005. I actually saw one of those going to dinner, meeting you for dinner last night. We (coughs) passed this up on Highway 6. You don't see too many of them. It was clean, too. It was real clean. It had no horsepower. Uh, I remember when they had one in the press fleet Mm -hmm. and uh, had a chance to drive it. And... It was nice and all, but it just didn't stand out like I think everybody hoped it would. Well, it was back in the day when Ford owned Jaguar, and this isn't a shot at Jaguar, but it's a fact of that car. Um, That car was a derivative of what was called the Jaguar X car. So Jaguar and the Lincoln LS were kind of combined and sold uh, under different brand names, but that car was a derivative of the, uh, the Lincoln LX or the Jaguar X chassis. Didn't they have thermal problems? They had a lot of fire problems with them, didn't they? Got oh, I, I didn't remember that, but they, the, they, the, they, they were gutless wonders is mm-hmm. what they were. Yeah, they had no horsepower. Absolutely no horsepower whatsoever. And uh, and uh, I was very disappointed. It was it looked like, it felt like it was built well, but it just didn't look like we wanted it to look. We wanted it to be a throwback to the 56. Yeah. The eyebrows over the headlights yeah. and stuff. And all they did was the port and the, hard, and the removable hardtop to uh, uh, bring back that memory of the original car. Okay. 